Church of Christ. Good, Good morning. morning. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord once again to serve him spirit in spirit, gladness, and in truth. Yes. Yes. I want to thank all of those that have come before me to make the service what it is. I want to thank the scripture reading from Brother Carl. I want to thank the prayer for Brother Justin and the songs from Brother Terry yes. and also the Sunday school uh, from Brother Brandon yes. and also the processional from Brother Terry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Amen. That was, he did an outstanding job with that. So Amen. Yes, I just did. like to thank the brothers that come before me and I always like to thank Brother Greg for allowing me to stand before you to preach a word from the heart yes. and from God's word. Yes, sir. Um, it's, it's, it's ironic and it, uh, you know God is real. Yes. Uh, my, my sermon this morning, I came up with my sermon from last night and really this morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, plan on preaching on what I was going to preach on. I'm going That's to okay. preach on. And so it tied in. When I came in, I heard the Sunday school dealing with love. Mm -hmm. And the title of my sermon is Love Is What Love Does. Yes. Love Is What Love Does. Mm -hmm. And it was taken from Luke chapter 22, and the verses are 31 and 32. Let us turn there if you have your Bibles. It's not a long lesson this morning, um, but it's going to have a lot of meat into it. And I just ask that you would follow along with me, and I hope a word is spoken to you that can help you throughout your lives yes. as we leave this building. Amen. Yes. In the scripture reading, starting with verse 31 and 32, it says, And the Lord Simon, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, mm -hmm. that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here we see Jesus telling Simon, Satan wishes to have you and sift you as we. Yes. We're back on health, which Brother Greg has been doing an outstanding job with yes. uh, in the sermons past. We, he's doing an outstanding job. Amen. But this is where Satan becomes Satan. Okay. When we as God's children become emotionally and mentally sick. Yes. This is where Satan does his number. This is where Satan praise on the weak and praise on the people who are going through an emotional or a mental time and is in that posture. This is where he becomes Satan. Yes. Sir. But to get the full download of these verses, you got to go back up to verse 23. Yes. So follow with me, go up to verse 23 and let's, and let's come down and read what's going on here. So when you get to first verse 23, it says, and they began to inquire among themselves, which of them, it was that should do this thing. And there was also a strife among them. Mm -hmm. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask the question before you continuously read. Why is there an argument? Why are the apostles arguing over who will be the greatest when Jesus dies? Right. Yes. And the answer simply is of the emotional and mental posture they were in. Yes, sir. See, see your mind when you are emotionally and mentally sick, your mind is not going to be on love. No. Your mind is not going to be on the things that you should do to help serve or help someone else. Teach. At that time, the only thing your mind is on is Self. how I can des what I'm looking for, that desire to help me in this posture that I'm in. That's it, brother. So, so Jesus is getting ready to go off of the scene. He's getting ready to die. Yes. And they are arguing about who will be the greatest. Mm -hmm. Let's continue to read. Mm. So it says, and he said unto them, the kings and the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that does serve. For whether is greater he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Wow. So here we see Jesus. He's telling them wow. what the real thing is, is serving others. All right, brother. It's not you serving yourself. See, Jesus wants all of us to be healed. Amen. He yes. wants all of us to get to the point in our Christian walk. Yes. Talk, in brother. This, in this world to where we become healed spiritually, Talk, emotionally, brother. Yes, yes. physically, yes. mentally, financially, all of the leads. Jesus wants us to be healed. Yes. See, he doesn't want us to get caught up into the devil's distractions. Right. Because as I told you before I got ready to speak, I said the devil is Satan 
when he sees a Christian or a person in an emotional and mental sickness. Yes. See, this is where Je this is where the devil is going to really prey on you. Talk, he brother. Needs to catch you into that posture and keep you there. Yes. So you're not going to see the things that are happening in life. Preach. You're not going to see the time. See, you're going to waste time yeah. because. That's what he's wanting you to do. He wants you to miss functions. Yes. He wants yes. you to miss events. Yes. yes. We had an outstanding time last night. Yes, we and did. That, and that inspired a lot of people, but it really inspired me to know that everything that's going on in your life, there is not enough going on to the point to where you put down God, Talk. you put down family, Talk. and you put Talk. down your love. Talk. Yes. There is nothing going on in life more yes. important than putting God first, Thank having you. a great time with family, and having love. Yes, brother. But the devil is going to put out there that, hey, no, that's not what floats your boat. Okay. But what floats our boat is who? Who's going to be at the top of the food chain? Okay. And what is man today striving to reach and striving to do? Rule the world. He thinks that he ruled the world and he thinks that the, the help him emotionally yep. and mentally is him being at the top of the food chain. That's correct. Whether it is in a position, yep. whether it is in finances, right. whether it is in the type of house you're in, right. whether it's the type of marriage you have. Correct. The devil is fooling people every day, Amen. getting them to believe in your emotional posture yes. that this is the it. That's it. But see, God is teaching the disciples that is not the it. That's not the Serving it. Serving others. Jesus said he came not to be served, but to serve others. Yes. This is the point as Christians that we need to get to and know. See, we have to get to that understanding and know that the devil is trying to destroy us. Correct. That's the, that's the goal of the devil. Amen. He's trying to destroy us and not get us to be in the posture of serving someone else and not yourself. Talk, preacher. See, it's good to be served at times. Amen. It's good. That's, that's, that's nice. But take time out to know how it feels to serve one, someone else. Talk, brother. And, you know, in my 31 years of living... I've seen that it actually feels better <laughs> me helping and serving someone else yes. than someone doing for me. That's, That's right. right, brother. See, it took time for that because it didn't always be that. It, it was not always the case with me in that. I like feeling being the person with the attention in sports and academics and, and those things that made me feel like this is what makes the laundry. Correct. But I had to learn this is not what's making me. No. Because over time, God has shown me I'm not in sports anymore. No. I'm not doing any of that now. Right. But God is giving me that attention of because I'm doing his will. There you go, brother. That is Amen. where we have to get to. Excuse yeah. me. That's it. See, the devil have us fooled thinking we're not who we are if we don't have things or if we don't have a certain person that we have on our side. Yes. No, you are who you are just because you Amen. are who you are. Thank you. Amen. You don't need anything to make you no. more than who you are. Thank you, sir. See, you are tricking the mind. That's what you call tricking the mind and lying to yourself. Yes. Because you don't believe you are important. Thank you. You don't believe you are special. That's right? it. See, you're believing the devil. Who are you trying to please? Preach, brother. And, and we're dealing with serving, but when you go over to Galatians, God told them, who are you seeking to please? That's right. If you are seeking to please man, you cannot be the servant of me. Correct. So if you are seeking to please man, you are not a servant of God. Right. Do you see how that ties in? Yes. See, you can't see if you're seeking to serve yourself or if you're seeking to be served by someone else, you can't be a servant of God. Exactly. You're trying to persuade men on, hey, I got this position. Hey, I right. got this kind of car. Right. I got this kind of lifestyle. Right, brother. I make this kind of money. Correct. I have this kind of wife. I have this kind of husband. Talk. You got a short husband. My husband talk. Right. <laughs> see, that, you see, that's crazy. That's, you see how the mind, but see, we can call that crazy, but that's what the mind likes to go to, though. That's right. Amen. See, an idle mind is the what? Devil's workshop. Devil's workshop. So you have to make sure you keep in that mind in good health, in good shape, and with God. Yes. But once you get that mind outside of God, oh my goodness. <laughs> you are headed for destruction. Yeah. <laughs> so let us continue to read. So we got to verse 27. Let's get to 28. It says, Ye are which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint you a kingdom. Mm -hmm. As my father have appointed me, 
Don't we all want to eat at God's table? Yes, yes. big man. Don't we all, aren't we all striving to eat at God's table and yes. be with, in the kingdom of God? Yes. And see, see, we have, see, the brother has been preaching and teaching on what kingdom is is it that we need to be getting into? Yes. Well, you see, this is Jesus talking. Yes. And Jesus said, you're going to eat at my table. That's what he you're said. You're going to be in my kingdom. Yes. So that's singular. That means he built and made a place just for us to be in, right? Correct. Because if it was multiple, he would have said, I would have had you to eat at all of my tables. Right. And he said, at my, my table, table, right? right. Correct. That there's only one. One. Right. So Jesus created one church. He did. There's only one table we're going to eat with him. Yes. If we make it over to the other side, which yes. we're all striving to get to, yes. there are not going to be multiple. No. There's going to be one. One Jesus table. Jesus deals in singular, and Jesus deals to where we all can understand the scripture. Yes. yes. Let's continue to read. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and 8, the Bible says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil right. or railing for railing, but countrywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Yes. See, when you get to the point of where you are in the kingdom of God and you are in the right church and you are in his, you're walking in his church yes. and you're at his table. Right. See, rendering evil for evil, that's not what God wants us to be. No. See, that's an emotionally sick posture. It is. See, knowing someone is harming you or knowing someone does not have your best interest, that does not mean you take that spirit that they're showing you and you... Do it better than them. Correct. That is the time where you have to learn and know this person is emotionally or mentally sick at this moment. Correct. So you know what? I'm going to do like God said. Understand and know that this person is in this posture because of something going on in their life. Amen. See, it took time for me to understand that people don't really mean what they're doing right. to you. Right. Sometimes people do have an agenda that this is what they're trying to do. Don't be mistaken what I'm saying. Right. But a lot of times people are dealing with things that you have no power of. Right. And it comes out in ways that you don't look for it to come out. Correct. But you have to have that understanding to know. Yes. Amen. Reach back into your brain and know, hey, how was I when I was in this right. posture? Right. Reach back Amen. and think back, how, how did I offend someone? How, right. how was I treating someone right big when man. i was emotionally sick Amen. right but see you don't take that that's not the time for you to take shots at other people right that's the time for you to think back and say hey what did i do to strengthen myself right, right. yes what did i do to strengthen and get healed Amen. what prescription what medication did i take to become a better me right. to become a better father to become a better mother to become a better son yeah. to become a better daughter to become yeah. a better co-worker to become a better person. Right. To become a better Christian. What prescription did you take? Right. What medicine did you take? Right. And if you took that medicine and it was the right dose and you took the right prescription, that's not for you to hold on to and say this person is sick and look how they're acting. Look what they're doing. Look at the decisions they're making. That's the time for you to reach into your prescription bag and your cabinets and give that prescription to someone else. Amen. See, that's you serving others. That's it, brother. And see, Jesus didn't come down with all power that he had in his hands and kept it to himself. No, he didn't. He gave some to his disciples. He did. And what did he tell them to do? Go out and you do in my name. That's right. You do in the Father's name. Right. Don't go out and do this on yourself. Don't do this in your name. Right. You, I'm giving you this to bless others in my name. Right. See, see, that's what he's telling us to do. He's not giving you information, wisdom knowledge and understanding for you to hold on to it and keep it and say this is mine right no he gives you that for you to go out and help your brother that's right see we're gonna get to verse 31 and 32 and see this is what we're all striving to get to as christians empowering the next man yes the empowerment brother that empowerment is something speaking of empowering and love when you get over in matthew chapter 26 we all know the story when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. Yes. In verse 6, and you get all the way down to 13, he deals with the woman with the alabaster box. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's going to show you something in there. 
You're going to see the emotional and mental posture yes. that these disciples kept getting into. Now, these were Jesus' closest friends. Yes, sir. They was with him every step of the way. Yes. They were learning. They, they were being taught by God. Right. So they had the information right at their doorstep. Yes. By the source. Yes. See, it didn't come from somebody. And, you know, they say, well, I told so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And da-da-da-da. And, da, 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 and then they end up getting to you. And then it's a whole other story. Correct. No. They getting it from the source. Mm -hmm. But when the woman came with the alabaster box with very precious ointment and poured it onto Jesus' head, it said the disciples were in, the, in indignation. Yes. And they said, what purpose is this waste? Yes. Do you see how the mind likes to go to when you are in an emotional, sick place? Yes. See, when, see, when the mind is sick and when it is and it's compromised, it, it, you don't know where it can go. That's the truth. You don't know what you can. it can lead you to be thinking. Yes. You don't know what it can lead you how to be acting. That's the when truth. When you have been breached by that emotional turmoil. I'm period. telling you. And so the disciples didn't see that this woman was showing an act of love. That's right, towards brother. Towards Jesus. Teach. And Jesus had to tell them, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not going to have me with you always. Right. right. You're not going to have me, but you're going to have these people around you always. So you're not going to have me with you always. This woman, she's doing a a, a work of love. Yes. She has, she's she going to be healed. Yes, sir. She's going to be healed because she had the sense and had the wherewithal to know, hey, I'm going to put whatever I got going on aside and I'm going to serve Jesus. That's what she did. I'm going to pour it on his head. And so if when we get to that point of knowing it is okay. It is okay to serve someone else. It is. It is okay to show um, uh, affection and love to someone else. Amen. And not worry about something being shown or given back to us. That's right. right. See, that's yeah. what we have to get to. Right. That's what I'm preaching. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm trying to get over. Love is what love does. Amen. Love is what love does. Amen. People can speak love. I love you. I love you. I love you. But what are your actions saying? Amen. What are you putting out? And see, God has blessed people with wisdom. Yes. And people know when you are just talking or whether you are really walking this, what Amen. you're saying to them. Amen. See, you can tell someone I love you all day long. Amen. But what are you showing to show them? What are you showing? Amen. What are you showing your brother that you love me? What are you showing the preacher when he's preaching these sermons of healthiness? What are you showing him back? You don't have to always say, okay, brother, that was an outstanding sermon. But your life should be changing to the point to where the preacher and the leaders and the teachers are being they're being uplifted because Amen. they see that the message is sinking in. Amen, brother. See, that should be the case. We, we should be able to see this brother and this sister is taking what God has given to me that I'm pouring into the people. Amen. And it is working in their lives. Right. And now, check it. They are moving and teaching someone else. Amen. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? It is. God is real. He's Amen. real, brother. And love is what love does. Yeah. See, the way you get love, the way it's real love from God, God has to be inside of you. Yes. But see, if we take, if we just get into, if we get into the mode of knowing to go to church on Sunday. Tradition. Knowing tradition. Thank you. If we get into traditional getting up, going to work. Getting up, going to church on Sunday. If we get into the tradition of just knowing we have to do these things, you're going to miss what really is the lesson you need to be getting. Amen. Amen. See, it's not, see, it's not tradition. We, no, it's take what you have been given. God loves us. And he chastises the one he loves. He does. So if, he, if you're going through some rough times and your mind is, your, your conscience is bothering you, and, and your mind is all over the place, thank God. Yeah. Because that's God talking to you. Yeah. But see, the key is, when he's talking to you, stop running from him. Amen. When he, stop running from him. When he's talking to you and he's dealing with you, quit running from him. When he got the medication for you to take, quit looking at it and saying, I'm going to stay in this posture because I done got used to it and I'm comfortable in this state. Talk, man. Take the medicine. And come out of it. Because let me tell you what. People are gonna get tired of being around you. Yes. And when you see and when you see people are actually taking the medication and leaving you sick 
and they're going on about their business, don't be mad. When you go to Holland about people leaving me and this and that, and y'all just doing me dirty. Talk, man. No, you're doing, you doing yourself dirty. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing yourself. Have some accountability. Amen. And some humility. Right. I done gave you the medicine now. <laughs> now, you don't want to take it now. <laughs> so, if we are not being guided by love, and that's with Jesus inside of us, our minds will go elsewhere. It'll go all over. It'll go all over the place. Yes, it will. So, let's pick back up in verse 31. And it says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Why does he want to sift you as wheat? Mm -hmm. Why was he wanting to have Simon? Yes, sir. Now you're talking. He wanted to have him in that posh, in that time because of the state Simon's mind and emotions were in. Talk. See, he going to sift you up when you... When, when we are out here and we think we know it all or we think we got it covered and, and, and we got it down to the point to where nobody knows nothing. Yes. See, God knows and the devil knows. Yes. See, now, it ain't just God that's knowing you not well. The devil knows you not well. Correct. So what is he going to do? He's going to put those vices in front of you. Yes, he is. And, he's, and you're going to fall right into it yes. when you are not listening. When you have the mind that you're going to do it your way, right. when you have the mind that I'm going to stay in my emotional posture because I don't want anybody stepping on my toes, hurting my feelings, and I don't want you saying nothing to me. You see that? Yeah. See, all of us can, can all of us can know about that now. Yeah. Talk, big man. All of us can can talk a little bit today. Yes. All of yes, us man. have been in that posture. Yes. And if you have lived to be older and to be an older person, I hold older people, elderly people in high esteem. Yes. Because I was raised that way. Right. I don't hang with young folk. I don't kick it with young people. If the reason why is because my daddy had me with him going and seeing older people since I was six, seven, eight years old. And you know what I found out? I can learn something from some older people. Yeah. Good mindedness. Yeah. Okay. Good mindedness. And you can also learn something from the, from the bad mind. What's right. good? You can learn something. You can learn how not to be. Yeah. And you can learn what you take and to be. Right. right. So you understand? So I picked up and I know that. And so it was, you know, being around the younger crowd, I was trying to figure, well, why, why, why don't I fit in with them? Why don't I fit in? Because you're too old. You, you might be you might be 21, but you sit really 51. Right. That wisdom and that what God gave me. See, I knew I was eight years old that God was tugging on me and pulling me yeah. on me and wanted me to be an inspiration to people today. Yes. I knew that very young. Yes. See, you don't, you don't meet too many eight and six and seven year olds that know God want them to be a preacher. That's right. I was I was preaching and doing putting jackets and suits on when I was six and seven and eight years old. You yeah. sure was. And like I'm in the mirror, I knew that. But see, running from God, it, it led me to be able to get some more wisdom, but it, my, my path could have been a little bit better. And you know why? It's because I was emotionally breached. Yes. I, I had been emotionally, my, those emotions, I didn't know how to control them. I didn't know how to get them, get them, get an understanding of them, get a grasp of them. Right. And so it led me to do some things that I shouldn't have. Right. So where I'm trying to get people today is get a hold of those emotions. Yes. yes. Control them. Get them. Yes. Pour it out on the table. Be honest with yourself. Right. Know that it's okay to hurt. Yes. Know that it's okay yes. to be vulnerable. Yes. Know that it's okay to cry and let it out. Yes. Know that it is okay to let someone know what you're going through mentally. Right. Talk, man. Because if you don't let someone know and you holding that in, you're going to be like the disciples. And you're going to be looking and saying, to what waste is this? Right. right. Who's going to be the greatest? Right. Worrying about when somebody dies so you can get a check. Right. Do you see the mind that the devil wants to put you in? Yes. And time is what? It's steady ticking Steady off. ticking, baby. And you're steady missing your chance to bless someone. Right. You're steady missing your chance to help teach your kids. Yep. Help teach your brothers and sisters in Christ. Right. See, you're missing time. See, what, that, what Satan wants to do is distract you from doing what it is you are put here for. And that is to serve. You got it figured out, big but man. But see, if, you don't, if, you, if you're not in a healthy state, how are you going to serve someone? You're not. How? You can't. It's always going to be about you. It's always going to be about you. You see. See, the reason why I know that it's not about me 
is because Jesus went through a whole lot more than what I have gone through in 31 years. Yes. He's been through a whole lot more than any of us that are 90, 80, 70, 60, and the list goes on. Correct. He went through a whole lot more. Yeah. So when your mind gets to the point of saying, well, you didn't go through this, so you can't talk to me. You you, you ain't been through that. See, I've heard people say, no, nah, you ain't been through that, so you can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. Think about Jesus. See, when we get in that posture and saying you ain't went through nothing, you don't know you ain't went through this, what I've been through. Think about what Jesus went through. Amen. Right. Put your mind on that because, see, see, the human mind, it, it, it'll do that. Yes, sir. It'll say, no, nah, you, 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 you don't even need to say nothing to me. You don't know nothing, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pride. Pride got you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know nothing, boy. You don't, know. You don't even know nothing. <laughs> I know a lot. And that brother that you probably, and that sister that you probably down and saying they don't know that, they probably know a lot. Yes. Because you don't know who, you don't know who God uses that, to make a point. There you go. You don't know who God uses to help get you where you need to get to. Exactly. But see, if you're full of pride, excuse me, and vain glory, you're going to miss when something is brought to you to be healed. Yes. See, 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 you'll tell on yourself when you're in that posture now. Yes. And can I just I just got through saying God gives people wisdom. He does. He gives people the understanding. He gives people revelation knowledge. He does. To know what the real deal is. He does. And you can't fool nobody. No, sir. You can't hide. You can't fool. So the best thing to do is tighten yeah. it up, get healed, and let's keep pushing. Yes, right. Yeah. Let's continue to read. In conclusion, I told you I wasn't going to be long. That's all right. We are all searching for peace. We are all searching for a peace of mind. Yes. And a quality of life. We are. But a lot of times we're searching in the wrong places. Amen. Talk to us, big See, man. You're not going to find peace in a home. No. You're not going to find peace in a car. No. You're not going to find peace in a bank account. No, sir. You're not going to find peace in a woman. No. You're not going to find peace in a man. No. Anything, you're going to find H E L L in those. Yes. And something you really don't want to be bothered with. Correct. Well, you're going to find pieces, you're going to find it in God. Yes. David says in Psalms 29, verse 11, he said, The Lord gives strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Yes. See, you got to get with, you got to get connected. A preacher said, You got to get connected with God. Yes, bro. If you want some peace, if you want to become healed, if you want to become better, <coughs> You, you stop looking in the wrong places. Yeah. Correct. Stop fooling yourself and saying you're going to be fine. I'm okay. Right. Stop fooling yourself. Stop having your own agenda. Yeah. And yes. get with God and get with his agenda. Yeah. Talk, yeah. big man. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, man. See, all of us want to be, all of us want to have some kind of importance in life. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the human body. That's the human desire. We want to feel important. We want to feel Validate. uh, validated. Yeah. We want to feel that we matter. Yes. And you should. Right. But see, stop looking for the world to tell you that you matter. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look at God. God. God created you. Amen. God created you. God is the one you need to get with. Go. He going to let you know you matter. Amen. Yes. He going to give you that peace of mind to know when things are going the way they're going or whatever, God going to give me that. Right. He going to give me that. He told them, don't lose faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. And when you become converted, what he told the brother to do? Go you straight go teach your brother. You go help your brother. Talk, brother. See, this is what, see, 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 when we get distracted, that's what the devil does not want us to do. Right. He don't want, he don't want you to help someone else. Don't want because you to... what? That's someone else that's getting on the good foot and staying on that path, and that's going to spread mm. like a wildfire. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's going to spread. That's contagious. It's contagious, Amen. brother. That's contagious when you when you got a good mind and when your head is in a good space yeah. Yeah. and when you are emotionally strengthened right. and mentally strengthened and physically strengthened. See, the devil can't get to you because right. God is giving you the strength. Right. He's giving you the peace. Amen. And he's giving you everything you need to keep fighting this battle. That's right. He's giving it to you. But Amen. see, if you're looking from it from a TV, from a cell phone... And from a bottle, from a blunt, from whatever people go to. Right. You're going to just get, keep getting sicker. That's it. You're just going to continuously to become more sick. That's the proper English. You're going to become more sick when you're looking in the wrong areas. Yes. Am I making sense this morning? Plenty. Yes. Yes. Trying to help somebody. Yes. Well, because when you've been down into the dark, those dark pits. Yes. And when you've been deeply down and emotionally sick, the only place for you to go, if someone is in here or watching... If you are in that place right now,
the only place for you to go is up. Up, you brother. can't go no more far down when you when you all the way down. Right. And it's a dark place. You it's can't dark. See, you can't see not one glimpse of light. Right. Make your mind up and say, I don't want to live in this. Right. I'm tired of living in this. Yes. I'm tired of feeling this way. Yes. I'm tired of being this feeling like the outcast. Right. I'm tired of doing this. Right. Go up. Go up. But you got to get with God. Yeah. You can't, you're not going to find it. No, you've been trying all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You've been trying all kinds of things to run away from doing it God's way. Mm -hmm. Is it working? No. no. Is it working? No. You're not going, it's not going to work. No. Because it's designed for you to get with him. Mm -hmm. And if he's tugging on you and if you got this message and you in here this morning and you listening and someone sent you this message, don't be mad. Take the message, be happy, and get on your knees and thank God. Amen, Amen that somebody brother. Somebody care about your mental state and your emotional state. Yes. Yes. We are striving to make it to heaven. Amen. Right. And worrying about what somebody got, what somebody done done, what somebody's doing, that is small. Simple, brother. That is small. That is simple. Come on with it. It's other things that you need to be worried about. Yes. If you're a grandparent, don't be don't be teaching your grandchildren or your this to, to go against what your parents are teaching. Teach. Don't be teaching your grandchildren or, or this and that to, hey, no, you come on over here and I'm the parents. No, that's your kids' parents. Right. That's your kids' kids. Yeah. Those are not your kids. You are the grandparents for a reason. Right. And what you need to do is you need to teach them the right thing. Right. Teach them the principles and the oracles of God. Right. Not the principles and oracles of the devil. Right. You teach them the right way. Amen. And you uplift the raising that your parent, that your kids are teaching their kids. Right. right. You, 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 you verify that. Right. You don't teach other things and you have that child confused and going in a way when it's time, when it's the twilight zone. Right. When it's the twilight zone and them lights is on, buddy, they gonna need some training. They gonna need some people that's that's telling them and giving them verification of what their parents are teaching them. Consistency. Yeah. They gonna need consistency, right. yeah. and they gonna need to know that it's real. Yes. Yeah. Because it, for <laughs> kids, young people, older and and middle aged people are smart. They smart. And people can pick up when you are when you have an agenda or trying to cheat something that's not pure. Right. Even the baby can pick that up. They can. My baby don't fool with n nothing that ain't pure. Right. They smart. She don't fool with nothing that ain't pure. If you looking like you kind of... Mm -mm, no, no, no hugging and giving you no high five. Yeah. And, see, and see, I'm not mad at that. Right. Because see, I know what's out here. Right. And I know Satan is out to snatch her up. Right. And the brother just got through preaching last week. It don't matter what you teach him. That's right. How good, how much money you pull in, how much time you invest in them. They are going to get off track at some point. Life going to Life is going life is going to be life and as they say. Yeah. Amen. Yes. yes it is. But it's our job as parents, as grandparents, as as leaders, teach, as people brother. in the church to get them straightened out, teach them, uplift them. And, and get them to where they need to, try, and, and they're trying to get to. That's it, brother. Not, not stay in an emotional posture to where it's only about you. Correct. And there are other people around you need to be touching. There you go, brother. Do you see that? I yeah. see that. Because see, if you are staying in an emotional sick place all the time, how are you going to strengthen your kids, yeah. your grandkids, people on your job, You're not. people that people that care about you? You're not. How? It's impossible. Because it's only about your state of mind. It's only about the way you feel. Right. And that's not the way God designed this to go. No. Jesus came down to be a servant. Yeah. And he taught his disciples, excuse me, and he's teaching us to be servants. Yeah. Yes. Be of service. Yes. Help someone. Yes. Love is what love does. Boy. See, you can tell. You can tell when someone really loves you. Yes. When they're giving you information that can help change your life. Yes, sir. When they're giving you information and doing things that can help change your state of mind. Yes. When they're doing things to help change your family dynamics. Yes, sir. That's when somebody really cares and loves you. You better believe it. And when they put in God first, that's that's what it is. Yes, sir. That's what we want to get to that's as it. Christians. That's it, brother. In closing. When you continuously read in Matthew 26, Judas gave a sign to some to some more emotionally sick people. He did. And he kissed Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
we're all striving to get to this point when Jesus, when this was come, when this was happening. He was getting ready to be crucified, and he knew Judas was getting ready to betray him. Yes. See, we're all striving to get to this point where Jesus get ready to tell Judas. He told Judas, friend, wherefore art thou come? Now, y'all probably looking at me and saying, well, what, what, what's the big deal with that? Hmm. Well, let me break it down for you. Break it down, baby. Jesus knew he was getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that Judas was emotionally messed up. Yep. And he knew that he was going to some more emotionally messed up people. Yep. And that Judas was going to betray him for some money. Yep. He knew that. And see, down to down to where he's getting ready to be on his deathbed and getting ready to go up back into the clouds where he owns it all. He called Judas his friend. He did. We all striving to get to the point. It's okay to know someone doesn't like you. Right. It's okay to know someone don't have your best interest. Teach, big man. It's okay to know this person don't want to empower you. Right. But you don't have to always let someone know you know them. Right? Teach, man. You don't have to always let them know. Right. Yeah. You call them friend. Right. You pray for them. Right. And you let God guide you. That's maturation. You let, you let God, that's maturation. You let God do God. Yes. You let God be God. Yes. And you just keep living. You keep having the faith. Right. And that don't and you don't render evil for evil. That's right. right. You don't do that. No. What you do is you pray for that brother, that sister. Right. You pray for that person that don't have your best interest. Amen. Right. And you let God handle that. Right. Let him handle it. You let you let God handle that. See, a lot of times as us as people, we want to let people know we ain't dumb. And I see, I see what you're trying to do. I see you trying to harm me. Yeah. I see that you you probably thought you had a little scheme going, or you probably thought you had it figured out, but I'm on to you. So you don't have to always speak or say nothing. You don't have to always let someone know right. when you have their number. Correct. Just keep living. Keep living. Keep living. Yeah. And life going to show them themselves. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> life going to show them and teach them Amen. themselves. Right. That you don't have to try to hide nothing. Life right. is doing a job on me. Right. And you know what? They going to come out and go to being honest and saying, oh, no, uh-uh, life doing a job on me right now. <laughs> Telling on themselves. Telling on yourself, but you just was shooting it, and and and, and you know, <laughs> just was shooting at the next man, cause you thought you had it figured out. Mm -hmm. So, in my closing words, all I would say is, become healed. Yes. Because God is love, and and God wants to be inside of you. Yes. Don't put God on the back burner. Don't put him on the side. And you full of the devil. You full of hatred. Right. You full of sickness. Get that disease out of you. Put God inside of you and, and become healed. Yes. Because there are people that's depending on you to be who just who you are. Mm -hmm. You are amazing just the way you are. Amen. Yes. That's what Bruno Mars said. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bruno Mars said you are amazing just the way you are. Mm -hmm. But but I'm saying this morning, God is telling me you are amazing the way you are. Mm -hmm. You amazing the way you are. Yes. And, and what God wants you to do is become even a more ama amazing. Yes. And become healed to the point mm -hmm. to where you do like in verse 32 mm -hmm. of Luke 22. Mm -hmm. When you become converted, help your brother. Yes. Yes. Help your brother. Mm -hmm. Empower the next man. That's it. Help your brother. That's why we are striving to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And this is what Jesus is teaching throughout the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Becoming emotionally healed That's it. to where you helping someone else. That's it. See that. See. See. This was. This was. This sermon. What Jesus was teaching. This was the problem. This it. Worrying about self, mm -hmm. but not try, striving to help someone else. Mm -hmm. Jesus was teaching this, and he was talking on this. And in closing, I love you all. I thank you all for being an attentive, attentive audience. Yes. If you are not a child of God, you do so by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized. And you're going to be baptized into the church of Christ, the church of God, the kingdom of God, the church that he built. In Romans 16 and 16, it says, salute one another with the holy Christ. The churches of Christ salute you. That is the only Bible that you're going to read. That's the only church you're going to read about in the Bible. That is the only church that God created. That is the only church that he built. That is the only church that he shed his blood for. That's it, bro. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 10, it said, Mark them which cause divisions among you. No. That's I'm, it. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's it. That's it? 
and, yep. and you, that you all speak the same mind and in the same judgment. That's it, brother. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. So we all need to be speaking the same mind and the same judgment. That's it. And the same gospel. Amen. And that gospel is the Church of Christ. Amen, brother.